Hey guys, how's it going? Anyways, um, I got this old chainsaw uh, given to me by a friend of mine, and I thought uh, I thought I'd show you guys a, a few uh, a few of the secrets that I've learned over the years on saw care and maintenance. And we're gonna get this uh, chain sharpened up. So I haven't had this thing running yet, so it's got old saw gas in it. I don't even know how well it's gonna run if it's gonna run at all. But uh, we'll just give this puppy a crank and. Uh, see what uh see what she does and uh i mean after all it's a still how bad can it be well that's a real good sign choke off sweet that puppy started right up now the very next thing we're going to check is the oiler okay how well this thing is oiling so i opened the reservoir a little while ago i noticed this thing's out of oil so let's go ahead and get some oil in it right now now as i explained before in a previous video i use 1030 standard motor oil in my saws i do not use the bar and chain uh, saw mix uh, it's a good way to wear out your sprockets and your bar if you doubt me, buy a quart of regular motor oil and then buy a quart of that saw um, that saw oil, the chain and bar oil, and uh, run a tank of chain and bar oil, feel your bar and feel how hot it is, and then run standard motor oil and then feel your bar after heavy cutting. It's going to be significantly cooler meaning less friction okay so the way we're gonna the way we're gonna test our whalers i'm gonna fire this thing up run it wide open and i'm gonna stick that saw right down next to a piece of wood and once this oiler starts working what should happen is that oil will start slinging off of the chain if i see the oil sling off the chain onto the wood and start to splatter on that wood we got our oilers working just fine I'm gonna give you a close-up on that there it is probably bar and chain oil which is really thick and gooey um, but I put some nice motor oil in there we'll continue to run that and that's gonna that's gonna make it work a lot better in the future and to be honest this uh, file is not real real good but this here is a 730 seconds and uh with this particular pitch of chain it should fit just fine i believe this is a 404 pitch and uh 730 seconds is the size of file that you want to use but uh what you're looking for is dullness and this is all by eye you can look at that tooth and determine you don't need a gauge or anything just your eyeball your eyeball is going to tell you what's what and uh i can tell these these aren't bad but they're not good and uh matter of fact i don't know if you can see this this one's got a little nick right here okay and uh we'll just look at the next tooth this was a little dull right here across the top right there you can see that little shininess and same thing this one's rolled over a little bit looks like it got a little dirt on it all right same thing and on down the line they're pretty much all kind of just similar this one's rolled over a little bit and i'm going to show you guys exactly how to take those out all right let's start with this one right here now when i sharpen a chain like this what i'm doing is i'm matching the angle which is there's usually this little angle guide on the back of the teeth i'm just going to match that angle never mind which angle they had and again i'm just eyeballing this this is all i'm doing everything i'm doing is by eye and i'm just gonna file that thing away and what i'm doing on this first pass is I'm actually gonna run a little burr across the top of that. You can feel it and you can see it, all right? It's starting to run that burr right across the top of there. Now, there's some angles we're worried about aside from this angle. This is one angle, this is another angle we're worried about right here. And whether or not we're pulling up or we're pushing down. If we push down, we're gonna increase the hook, which is gonna make the saw cut more aggressively, okay? 
I'm just, I'm not, I'm going to leave that part alone. I think we got the hook looks just fine. You know, I might dig it in one or two and then go with a standard, you know, those two strokes I just pushed down on just to kind of, you know, grind away down into the, down into the chain a little bit to get a little bit more of a hook. And then I'll just push it this way and I'll keep my angle here. If you see, if you've got this angle correctly and you see metal starting to curl up on the tip here, you're going to want to bring the back of the file up. Okay. And that'll start cutting on this edge here. So we're going to give this a few more strokes. All right. Now I can see that with my eye that that blade or that one tooth is sharp. All right. You can see there's no more shininess. You can see just a tiny little burr. And what I like to do is just, just lick that little burr off. Now I only do this on the first sharpening or if the, or if the blade is, or if the chain is really, really dull. Okay. And I'm not pushing real hard here. I'm just barely giving it any licks. I'm just one handing it, holding the camera with the other hand. So I'm not really taking metal off. I'm just, all right. Now that blade is razor sharp. You can feel it. You can see it. There's no dullness. There's no rounded edge. And then you're going to go to your next tooth. You're going to skip this one because this one's an angle like this. You can see how that one's dull compared to this one. All right. Now we're going to go to this one here. You see how this is rounded over? All right. So I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to give it a couple push. I'm going to push down a few times, increase the hook. And now I'm pushing this way. And I'm going to saw on this thing pretty good because uh, we need to remove a little bit of metal here to get it back to a nice sharp edge. Actually, this saw, or this file is kind of dull, so um, I'm having to hit it a little bit more than, than normal. Now you can see I just raised that burr right there. You can see that burr. I just took that burr right up. I'm going to curl it over and I'm going to lick it off. This is the secret to a real sharp chain. Now, like I said, you only have to run this burr if the chain is really dull or damaged, like, you know, it's just mildly damaged here. And I'll just lick that little burr right, right off. And your, your tooth is razor sharp. Let's look at it from this angle. Let's look at it from another angle here. You see that? That baby, I mean, I can feel it. It's really sharp compared to this one. This one feels rounded and dull. This one feels like it could actually cut me if I push too hard. All right, and that's what you want. You want this thing scary. If this chain don't scare you, it ain't sharp. Okay, so we're gonna do it again. One more time, I'm gonna push down. I'm gonna give it a couple licks. All right, and then I'm gonna bring it in. I'm gonna push this way now. And remember, if I see metal coming off of this side, I'm gonna pick the back of this. You're all doing it by eye, all right? You're just looking at this thing with your eye and you're getting up close. If you need glasses like me, well then wear your glasses. Some people like to put these things in a vise. You know, I like to twist my file a little bit as I'm going. All right, now I got my little burr and I'm just gonna roll that burr back over and we're just gonna lick that burr right off. And that's going to give you the perfect sharpness right there. Now take a look at that. That's perfect. All right. The angle looks nice. I really didn't take anything off. It was a superficial amount of metal that I took off. You know. Now, you don't have to sharpen your saw this sharp every time. I keep saying that, but it's just important to know that. You don't have to sit there and, and, and grind on this thing every single time. And when I'm sawing wood, if I'm cutting wood, let's say I'm cutting wood all day long, which I don't do anymore. Uh, I just buy my firewood. I know that's pathetic. I never thought I'd say that. But uh, <laughs> let the young guys do the work. And uh, so anyways, my point is, if you're cutting wood all day long, okay, that tooth's nice and sharp. Okay, that angle probably could have been brought in just a hair, but we're not that far off. I'm not going to worry about it too much. There's a little corner there you can see that i didn't hit i'm not going to saw that tooth down to meet that corner down there okay i'm not going to clean it up that much because it's just fine i'll get it on the next go around um what was i saying though so the point is the point is 
uh, while you're sawing, if you notice this thing's lost a little bit of its aggression, the saw should be cutting. You shouldn't have to push on the saw. It should actually pull itself into the cut. It should be aggressive. And uh, and if it starts to, if in your chips, you want to look at your chips. If your chips start looking like they're like they're turning into dust, you want to pull that saw aside. Even if normally in the past you would just keep on cutting with a saw chain like that. And you want to just give it two or three licks to each two. Sometimes that's all it takes, just to just top them off. Got a nice little burr there. We're going to roll that over. And we're just going to lick it off. I'm not putting much pressure on like this. All right. And that's a razor sharp tooth. That tooth is scary sharp. All right. And again, this one's pretty bad, actually. You can see the rollover right there. The shininess on the top. Okay. I wish I could just get this thing a little bit closer. All right. So pushing down a couple strokes and then I'm going in all right lick it off lick it off and that rolls that burr over okay that burr is not going to help you any and I took a little bit off of this and yeah, well, actually my angle looks pretty good now that I'm looking at it my eyes aren't what they used to be all right but if you if you find out your chips or anything but nice little squares it's pulling out nice little squares when you're cross cutting if you're cutting with the grain it should be big long ribbons but if you find out your you know just by the way the saw feels and by your chips if this thing starts getting dull take it aside and give it a few little licks and use your eyes those teeth will start feeling smooth instead of like they're trying to dig into your finger like right there see that that feels like it's trying to like actually cut me i can feel it grabbing my skin all right this one i i, I i'm not scared of it that don't bother me this one's starting to get there but if you keep your chain sharp everything is going to hold up better your sprockets your chains your bar is not going to heat up your bar is going to last forever quite literally forever we've we've had bars for some of them for 10 years or more never had to re, re uh, square them up or nothing sometimes you have to get them ground to square them up here and uh if i buy a bar brand new and i'm the only one that's using it now see that angle on this one that's a little sharp so i'm gonna focus on this side over here just a little bit and i'm looking at the length of each teeth too if one's looking a little longer than the rest i'll i'll give it a few more licks if it's looking a little short, I won't quite, you know, worry about it as much. Everything's done by eye. You're just comparing this tooth with all the other ones. You can clearly see it. And like I said, this chain looks like it's been well taken care of, okay? The people who uh, own this saw, um, they must have known a few things about, besides this saw, this chain's not that old. You'll start seeing um, evidence of people you know when people don't know how to sharpen a chain towards the ends of the chain's life you're going to see the evidence of, of that uh of their lack of ability because uh the teeth will really start looking like they're different sizes and the angles are off um and all that sort of thing this file is really dull but it's actually i mean it's still doing the trick that one's scary sharp that one frightens me so we're going to keep going all right another one i just can't you know, this is what we're left with. Let me get the filings out of the way. Okay, you can see the sharpness right across the top of that. You can't see no dullness. You can't see the sun, sun lighting off of that thing. Right here, you can immediately see that little spot right there, right? And this feels smooth. It feels like it's not sharp. It's not grabbing my skin. All right. So, I'm gonna give that a few licks. I'm going down. And then I'm bringing it that way, okay? You don't need a gauge, you just need your eye, trust your eye. Your eye will get trained over time. If you're careful, you just take your time. First couple times. That's all you need. All right, we flipped the saw around. We've got all this side sharp. Now we're gonna start on this side. Same thing. Get those filings cleaned off so we can see what we're doing. 
All right, so there's our last tooth, our first tooth that we did. They're all sharp now. Boy, I could really feel the sharpness of those. Those really want to grab my fingers. Yeah, it's that thing's scaring to death, scaring me to death. So she's sharp enough. All right, so one last thing that I want to address. So yeah, well, before you take this out and cut it, I'll tell you how I like my saws, my chain. See, I can tell they were using the wrong oil right here. It's got this little buildup, this crusty little buildup. That tells me the saw was getting hot and that they're probably running it with a dull chain. And not only that, that they're probably got that bar and chain and oil in there, which I've already determined because it was sticky when it came out. So anyways, this chain's a little tighter than I usually like them. What I like is I like to loosen that chain where there's about half of it sticking down. All right, now on a brand new chain, you want to run it a little bit tight because it's going to constantly be loosening up on you. But uh, this chain's pretty well broke in. I'm going to leave it like this. But uh, usually I would leave, even if it was sagging a little bit like this, that wouldn't bother me a bit. You know, sometimes the chain will fall off a little more often than you like. But trust me, your chain's going to last about 50 times longer. Or not, well not, excuse me. Well, yeah, your chain and your sprockets. Your sprockets and your bar is going to last you about 50 times longer. All right, let's get you back on the tripod and we're going to take and cut some wood and see how this baby cuts. All right, we'll just have a go at this juniper right here. And uh, juniper is kind of a soft wood. It's not too hard to cut. Let's see how she does. show you what your your sawdust should look like nice big flakes okay we're cross cutting that's a sign of a nice sharp chain if they start looking like this well I can't make sawdust out of it <laughs> if they start coming out like dust your your chain is probably dull let's make some cuts on some bigger pieces of wood this stuff's already been cut but let's uh let's give it a whirl pretty good we got nice sawdust you notice I didn't have to push down on that saw it was kind of pulling itself in now chain looks pretty good things are well lubricated we still got some of that old bar and chain oil in there that stuff is just nasty this this bar this chain should just be going free. Let's fire it up and let's get some oil in on, on it. Ooh, I got these little stickers all over me. So, we're not getting enough oil. Um, I don't know what's going on here. 
I'm going to have to take the bar off and we're just not. Well, that's pretty grody. So let's check it out and see if things are just clogged up on us. And uh, maybe they are. Maybe they are. All right. So let's see if we can, oh yeah, look at that. Look at that stuff. Look at that. Yeah, that's what we're talking about right there. All right. Look at that come out of there. It's just a bunch of goo. Yeah, we're talking, you know. That's a bunch of junk in there. Our sprocket looks pretty good. If I had an oiler, we hit that baby with an oiler right there, a sprocket oiler. But uh, looks like a pretty good chain or a bar, excuse me. And uh, I'm just gonna hit this with a little bit more gas. <laughs> see oil coming out of there so we're gonna say that there's the actual oil or should be working okay so the next thing I'm gonna check is if this is the right bar the bar needs to match up with this hole right here but you know it actually does look like it's lining up just from what I can see okay final test uh. All right, I'm starting to see a little oil come out of there and I can see oil on the chain now so, I don't know what happened but uh, it's definitely working now so good news so anyways folks if you like my content give me a thumbs up and uh, hit that subscribe button if you would. It helps me out more than you can imagine. Thanks a lot, folks. We'll see you on the next one.